Hello, and welcome back to the Any Button to Start World Tour, the only video series taking you through various depictions of major world cities through the medium of video games. Thus far, we have covered London, Tokyo, and New York, three cramped, bustling metropolitan hubs. So today, I thought that we'd take it a little slower and go via the scenic route. So roll your windows down to let that breeze in and keep your eyes peeled because you'll never know when you see a star. Yes, today we're going to Hollywood. This is Los Angeles in video games. Before we start, however, please remember to like the video, subscribe to the Any Button to Start channel and comment any thoughts you have down below. Anyway, let's get on with it. Okay, okay. Let me get the most obvious pick and the one game that breaks my no fiction lies depictions rule out of the way first. Do I even need to introduce this game that is the single best selling entertainment property of all time? Not game, entertainment property. All I have to say is this is Grand Theft Auto 5. Rockstar Games' big return to their rather juvenile pastiche of La La Land has dominated the mainstream video game landscape for so long that I believe many of us video game attention payers have forgotten what initially made GTA V and Los Santos so captivating. When going back to grab footage of this almost 10 year old title for this video, I was conscious that I didn't want to just talk about the one note satire of the game's environment or its faithfulness to the real life LA. Those are well worn territories. Instead, I decided to go on a few long and slow tours of Los Santos in the game's first person view mode as to try and enjoy the city from ground level, as it were. I feel that GTA and other similar open world titles encourage a detached and all too chaotic playstyle within their players. And whilst of course that sort of simulated mayhem is quite cathartic and one of the series' selling points, it can sometimes distract from the more quiet and careful details put into their environmental designs. When researching for this video, I would load up a completed save of GTA 5, enter the first person camera perspective and head off into the city, simply going anywhere my eye led me. What I found in between awkwardly animated NPCs spouting the same few lines of meme worthy dialogue Hi. was a representation of California's largest city that captures and comments on subtler critiques of LA and its people than the crass depictions of the game's in fiction celebrities. Walking slowly through the city's streets, let me notice how stark the contrast was between the poorer and more wealthier neighborhoods. The oversaturation of advertisements and liquor stores in the region of the city Franklin comes from in juxtaposition with the pristine nature of Michael's neighborhood seemingly untainted by capitalism, or at least that base form of it, is a clear and deliberate comment on the inequality within Los Angeles and perfectly ties in with the main plot's themes of the broken American dream. I could genuinely write a whole video about those strolls that I took in Los Santos and I may just so. So I'll leave it here for now by saying that GTA 5's fictionalized depiction of Los Angeles is still almost 10 years after release one of the most richly detailed and well realized cities in all of video games. And if you haven't experienced at least a taste of it, well, I, I just don't believe you. It's GTA 5, everyone's played it. Oh, and one more thing, don't drive your jet ski at night. The key is not to drive your jet ski in the dark. This is against the law, not even just that. This ain't right. Let's keep talking satire, though somehow the social commentary within this next game is 
even more juvenile than GTAs. Duke Nukem 3D is what would nowadays be called a boomer shooter, though at its 1996 release it would have just been called a shooter. Duke Nukem was created as a pastiche of the muscular, oiled up, ultra masculine Hollywood action movie heroes of the 1980s, and his first 3D entry placed him in an alien invaded satirical depiction of Los Angeles. Much like GTA, Duke Nukem seems to revel in the very ideas it is satirising, and the crass humour that spills from the main character's mouth and through his eyes when looking at the city seems to straddle the line between irony and sincerity. It's funny playing this game now, though, for all the wrong reasons, as much of its comedic style reminds me of the memes funny when I first became aware of Duke Nukem, around 2010 or 11. The simple and occasionally lazy pieces of parody found in the game's levels feel like relics of a time when gamer-slash-internet-slash-western humour was a lot more surface level, and 20 plus years of diving further into post-ironic humour as a culture has not left us with the best impression regarding these jokes when represented today. As a game, however, it is quite engaging. This is because Duke Nukem 3D has the kinesthetic profile of a true blue Doom clone, and hence puts a heavy emphasis on player movement, snappy pacing, and labyrinth fiend level design. The differentiator for Duke Nukem was the atmosphere of those levels. They were still mazes of locked doors and keycards like the game that inspired it, though the set dressing, with its cynicism and crudity, conveys a wackier and more tongue-in-cheek tone than Doom's hellish environments, especially in the early levels set in LA. Let us move away from the bawdiness of Duke Nukem and discuss a far more… mature game. L.A. Noir is a love letter to the history of noir and crime fiction set in Los Angeles. The Long Goodbye, The Big Sleep, Chinatown, these were clearly all huge influences on Team Bondi and Rockstar's prestige television-esque open-world detective simulator. In L.A. Noir, the player takes up the role of Cole Phelps as he works his way up the ranks of the late 1940s Los Angeles Police Department. You'll utilise the then-revolutionary, now blurry and uncanny facial capture technology used to scan in real actors' performances to determine whether a character is telling the truth or not. This being a game about investigation, a focus on detail within world and environment design is necessary, and without a doubt, L.A. Noire more than provides in this department. The game, of course, contains the lineage of Rockstar's game-changing open-world formula, seeing as it was published by the GTA developer. However, more noticeably, L.A. Noire pulls from the previous work of its development studio, or at least the people that made it up. Team Bondi was created by Brendan McNamara from the ashes of the Sony-owned development house Team Soho. McNamara would lead Soho in creating the Getaway franchise, which has previously been discussed in my London in Video Games video. Just like the Getaway's meticulous and authentically atmospheric depiction of London, L.A. Noire's Los Angeles basically feels like a time machine with how immersive and well-realised it is. I think that probably has something to do with the type of story L.A. Noire is trying to tell. The framing of the player as a detective makes them question the people in this town of actors and liars. The lack of trust the player has for the characters they talk to, and by extension the city they inhabit, leaves the player feeling a stronger connection to the protagonist, who, at the start of the narrative, is, like the player, new to this city, notorious for chewing up and spitting out the young and idealistic. What I'm basically trying to say is, all of L.A. Noire's parts, and L.A. is a big one of those parts, come together to create an incredibly cohesive final product that stands as one of the seventh console generation's crowning achievements. Despite the film industry, music industry, and a certain medicinal plant, 
I would say Los Angeles is most famous for its skateboarding culture, with some of the most important names in the sport originating from the City of Angels and the iconicism of spots such as the Hollywood High 16 step, brick banks and the Venice Bowl, LA has more than earned its reputation as a skating mecca. So, it only makes sense that the most famous and iconic skateboarding video game franchise would set at least one of its 20 entries within the city. Tony Hawk's American Wasteland is that one game. It's true that many of the previous and future games' maps were inspired by IRL skate spots located within LA, though American Wasteland is the only game in the franchise to focus in on Los Angeles as a city of skating. Like other Tony Hawk spin-off games, THAW puts a stronger focus on story and presentation than the mainline Pro Skater franchise. This focus leads to a semi-open world filled with skate spots designed as send-ups of Hollywood tropes and LA staples that a player-created character can use to prove to the other skaters around the city that they are indeed the raddest. I want to commend American Wasteland for its accurate and aptly diverse depiction of LA's skate scene, both in general presentation and in the characters it depicts. From following the scene for a while and watching many Los Angeles-made skating videos, I can report that there is not one monolithic look or style for the LA skater. Punks, indie kids, hip-hop heads and everyone in between can identify as an LA skater as long as they skate in LA. And Tony Hawk's American Wasteland seems to understand this well. It's a testament to just how important Los Angeles is to the sport and culture of skateboarding that the Tony Hawk franchise would choose to make this entry a love letter to LA. The final game we will be discussing today is yet another title created by Rockstar, though this entry forgoes their usual satire and social commentary to instead intravenously deliver pure adrenaline via the streets of LA. Yes indeed, this is Midnight Club Los Angeles, the as of right now final entry in the short-lived open world arcade racing franchise serves on a silver platter the city of LA to its players for them to burn rubber through and bump along to its raucous licensed soundtrack. Of course, LA is more than just a collection of roads within Midnight Club Los Angeles, and the city was clearly chosen due to its history of car culture, both in terms of modding and racing. The true joy of MCLA, however, lies in its kinesthetics. Not only are the car controls satisfyingly responsive and weighty, but the way in which the game uses its graphical presentation to further sell to the player the speed and force with which their car is moving makes the game feel all that much more exhilarating. Whether it's the virtuosic implementation of motion blur when gaining speed, or the fantastically impractical action camera mode that pushes the player's view right up the arse of their car as they swerve around corners. Midnight Club Los Angeles clearly puts a great deal of emphasis on making the player feel like they're tearing up the streets of this iconic city. There you have it. Five depictions of Los Angeles within video games that each capture something different and unique about the city. Whether it's the commentary of GTA 5 or LA Noir, the parody of Duke Nukem, or the raw thrills of THAW and MCLA, I would hope that there has been something in this video that has piqued your interest or made you think about LA differently. If so, let me know down in the comments, leave a like on this video, and please subscribe to the Any Button to Start channel. Thank you for watching, and until next time.